Okay, let's go live. James Middick speaking, trainingsites.io, uh, Google Developers Conference yesterday. They knocked it out of the park, especially if you're an online course creator, anyone who's in the education space, because there is a hidden gem in here that if you get a chance, watch the release, the little keynote that's there. But I'll put the links to the below because there's some absolutely really cool stuff that you and I are going to be able to use when we're trying to teach stuff online. Uh, and the big part for me is I've been talking about this kind of thing for the last four or five months. As I played around with all of the experimental stuff Google's been doing at the developer conference, this is all coming into one space, one wonderful ecosystem that Google has that is going to allow us to completely streamline how we create content, not just text, but multimodal. And I think the best thing to do is to show you right away something really cool that they did as a demo. And I'll put the links to these demos, but I want to show you what happened because this is absolutely going to blow your mind. What am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about live video with, in our case, dialogue. And she commands your awe with every breaking light. This ocean, it's a force, a wild, untamed might. Okay, just think about that for a second. This video and the dialogue was created by VO3, which they announced yesterday. Uh, and here's the prompt right there. And I'll try and make that a little bit bigger so you can see it. But basically what it said was medium shot frames of an old sailor. And then, and then it had the actual um, dialogue that was there. And what it got was a pretty darn close <laughs> representation of an old sailor in a blue hat and what take a listen for a second because i want you to listen to this one more time listen to the sounds and she commands your awe with every breaking light this ocean it's a force a wild untamed did you hear that in the background they had the dialogue plus they had the background sound now this is vo3 it was announced it's available there is a cost for it obviously but just start thinking, we've been talking about all of this multimodal stuff. Uh, and if you remember correctly, I'll put some of the links to the other videos that I did. But this is the exciting part. All of the multimodal stuff is starting to come into play now. I did a number of videos uh, about aistudio.google.com. And one of the things that they had was his ability to stream live with Gemini and basically be able to talk to it, be able to show your screen and be able to show your video camera and the AI having or being aware of all of this. So this stuff is all becoming available now and it's all in one place. And the big thing for us is our ability to create visual content over and above just doing a text prompt and getting a response about a syllabus. Um, the ones that I looked at earlier, some of the different examples that we had that I've gone through uh, in other videos, you know, things like text FX and uh, video FX was one of them. Things about Notebook LM and uh, YouTube Talk to Images. So they had a whole bunch of stuff that they've been doing, but now it's actually live and available. And the one for us to watch is we had VO2, which is the one I showed a demo on, and that was the one where you just had a text prompt and it created a video. Now we have VO3, which allows you to do a text prompt plus the narration, and it adds the narration and any appropriate background sounds to the video so that we've got a full-fledged videographer now on staff being able to make these videos. Now, I'm not going to try and snow you and say everything's perfect, it's ready to go. No, it's not. Is there stuff that doesn't work properly yet? Of course. Is it getting better each and every month? Yes. Is there still a cost to it? Yes. Is there still some limits on the length of videos? Yes. However, however, this is not going to get worse and it's not going to get harder. Pay attention, watch what's happening here. Look at some of the videos and start thinking, hey, how can I use this? If I'm gonna create a course where I wanna teach someone something, do I need to have just in case learning and create videos and content and all of this stuff just in case they wanna learn it? Or can I start looking at these AI leveraged ideas taking what I already know, love, and do, and use these tools to create just-in-time learning. Using text prompts, putting together pieces, and having content created that we can then use to actually teach people. 
and get people from point A to point B. I'm going to show you kind of the big things that changed on the video and because that's the part that I'm excited about. There's more obviously than, um, you know, they had a whole bunch of additional uh, stuff that was announced. Uh, one of the cool ones, actually, I'll just talk about this because it makes sense. Not makes sense. It's really cool for, for us if we're actually in the teaching space. Um, they had this one and I saw a little bit of a demo on it, uh, but this one is called Google Beam. Uh, and this one was cool because it was like a whiteboard that had some cameras on it. Uh, and what happens with it is if you have a board and someone else in another space has a board, you can basically have a 3D interaction of you talking to a 3D, inner, uh, 3D version of someone else in a different place. So this is the literal virtual meeting where it's not just you and a camera. It's like you moving around in a space live in real time three-dimensional. So they did a demo of that one, which is really cool. That one's off in the future, but just imagine you're teaching something, you have to show something, uh, you turn to the side, you turn it to the side, you move stuff, you've actually got a virtual representation of yourself uh, somewhere else. Uh, VO3 has a dialogue and sound, I just showed that to you. And all of these ones with VO2 and VO3 uh, for all of the ones that are involved, with video, here's the part that I, I think is really important. I'm going to go over these just a little bit so that you kind of keep them in the back of your mind. The first one is consistency. Uh, the big problem with all of these when they started out was that if I did a prompt one time or I had an image one time and then I tried to use it again in another video or added it to another one, it was like completely different. So, you know, if you had to stitch together a couple of these blocks of generated videos to get it a little bit longer, it was like you had one version here and one version there. It was really hard to do, didn't work well. They've, I, I, I'm not going to say it's fixed, but it's like 99% better than it was before. The other thing is, is anytime these were used before, there was no camera controls. So what that means to you is it's like always one position, uh, no zoom, no pan, no move to the side, no move to the right. It was like fixed positioning. That is available now. Objects. I'm going to show you some of the ones in objects. What that means is that you can take an object and add it to a video or another image. Uh, and you've probably seen this kind of on any of the Google phones, right? The smartphones, the Android phones. Google has shown this, but it's now in videos and allows us to be able to do that. Um, and it's not limited to text to video. They also announced something called Flow. And the difference between VO3 and Flow is think of VO3 as creating the individual video. Think of uh, Flow as being the filmmaker and putting this all together. So image to video, video to video, adding objects, character controls, uh, ingredients to video. I'll explain that in a second. And so you're just kind of thinking, I've got all of this stuff in my head on what to show. Do I want to put it in text or is it something that I can start thinking about creating using some of these really neat tools? Now, where does this all come into play and how does this kind of figure out? Well, I'm going to show you what the pricing is and stuff. And again, this is just what I got from yesterday. Uh, is it perfect? Of course not. I have no uh, proof that this is exactly how everything's going to go and what's going to happen. But I did want to show it to you so that you see that it's available. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just going to go and uh, actually I do want to show you one thing just before I go to the pricing. Uh, and this is one that uh, I've seen a couple of videos in this. I haven't done one myself and I'll do one after or at least put the link to the video where I learned about it. But I think Google is in a really, really good space here uh, in terms of the AI race and winning it. Now, why am I saying that? It's because they're so tightly integrated with all of the other things that we do on a regular basis. Now, here's two and I didn't mention it and I'll go back to the pricing in a second because this is important. Um, when you're using Gemini, they announced all the new models, which is stuff, you know, the technical stuff. Not really, I uh, don't want to talk about that. But the one thing that is available is, is that if you are in Gemini and you're thinking, man, what am I going to do here? I'm just going to go um, at, if I do the at sign, look what comes up. Google Calendar, Google Tasks, Gmail, Google Docs, Google Drive, Workspace. I have a Workspace account. What this means is that now Gemini can actually access my emails, my calendar, my documents, my sheets, and I can interact, having the chat interact with all of my personalized data set. 
That's the first thing. So this is available now and you're gonna see tighter and tighter integration it. This is why one of the reasons I'm so, uh, uh, you know, so hyped about the, the Google suite is because all of the data is now becoming personalized. Here's the other one that is uh, interesting as well. Now I'm in Canada, so I don't have it yet, but I saw in the demo that they've also integrated Google Gemini directly into the search. So right now there's just the microphone and I think, uh, what's this one? Uh, Lens is the other one that's there. But they also have one in the demos, which is Gemini. So we've now got Gemini uh, AI embedded directly into Google search. So think about this. A large language model is about data, right? Google has this search data. It's indexed. Plus, they've got the large language model stuff they've been training. Plus, they've got all of our personal documents now. So I think the announcement, the hidden thing was was this, is that they're now bringing all of these together. They're personalizing it, allowing it to be built on our data to make it personalized and consistent about, amongst the responses that we get. Uh, and this stuff is all kind of happening in the background slowly, but it's all coming together. And that's one of the big reasons that I'm kind of excited about it. So we've got Google AI with all our docs and stuff. We've got Google search here. And then now we've got all of this video content that we're able to create with Gemini. And here's the part that I don't understand, but just to be aware of it, here's where we're at right now. Uh, I went with my uh, Workspace account and I tried to sign up uh, and it said, hey, we're currently signed in with my Google Workspace account to get Google One switched to your personal account. And I was going, what the heck's that about? Well, I guess the thing is, is you can't get the new VO2 and VO3 stuff with your personal account, you have to get your, um, or with your business account, you have to get it with your personal account, your Google One account. So I'm gonna open Google One and I'll switch to my personal one. I'll open it up and then let's go take a look. So this is my personal space. And if I go click on the left-hand side here, we'll open it up. There's one called Google AI. I'm gonna click on it. And these are the ones that are available. These are the ones that are available today. So they have Google AI Pro, which is $0 for the first month. So you can sign up for this now. Uh, the only thing is it's not your workspace account. It's like a Google One personal account. Uh, you get the Gemini app and it's got 2.5 Pro and Deep Research, 2.5 Pro and Video 2, or VO2, pardon me. It's got Flow for that filmmaking one. Remember I talked about Flow? I actually showed a little bit of this from Google Video, which was when you had a Google Doc and it turned it into a video. That's kind of where the Flow stuff came from. So Whisk, Notebook LM, Gemini and Docs and more, Gemini Chrome and Storage. So there it is and it's got VO2, okay? Now the other one they have is Google Ultra and it actually is $169 a month now for three months, but it also has VO3 in it. And VO3 is the one that allows you to put dialogue in it. So they are available now. They do cost obviously a little bit of money, but this is where things are going. And if you want to sign up for it, you can certainly do it. Like if you're serious about this and you want to create some videos, uh, I would go and get, you know, the Google AI Ultra one, play around with it, start saying, hey, is this ready for me? Is it stuff that I can use? Is it worth $170 to be able to do stuff on my own for specific purposes and not have to go to a video editor each time. So it is available now. The big difference is the VO2 or the VO3. They're both really good. VO3 has the dialogue. VO2 does not have the dialogue. And again, they're only available on your personal account, not your business account. Um, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about this and this week is kind of wild because we've got the Google Developer Conference, I think the app, the Mac one is available, uh, is next week or at the end of the month. But this stuff is coming very, very, very quickly. And, and for me, in an education business, my suggestion to you is just pay attention to the big players here and watch what's happening and kind of think, how can I best leverage or what of OpenAI, Anthropic, ChatGPT, Claude, um, the Google, the uh, even perplexity and Apple, like what are these big players doing? What are the tools that I can use to leverage them and treat them as my digital assistant? What can I do to actually have them help me start building, grow my education business? 
the big thing that's running through all these, and this is the part that I, I don't know if everyone is kind of paying attention to, is this is becoming completely multimodal. So it's not text or prompt text response. It's about interacting with someone who can actually help and work with us. Uh, if you haven't already, I'd love for you to join trainingsites.io forward slash join. That's my personally branded campus where I keep all of these videos, prompts, everything I've been doing about starting, building, and growing an education business. It's there. It's free for you to use. And of course, like and subscribe to the channel. I do these videos every day here on YouTube. Yeah, like, subscribe, and I think give me a, a thumbs up or something. Apparently that helps too. So I hope you enjoyed this. Take care. Expect the best. We'll be back tomorrow with another great video.